This is everything you need to know about the way the military uses geospatial intelligence. What is geospatial intelligence and why is it important for the military? Well, geospatial intelligence is useful information about location. So any useful information that you can derive from location data, let's say for example, satellite imagery is a good source of information. You can derive intelligence from satellite imagery by looking at things like changes over time. So if you're analyzing, let's say a military installation, you can watch over time and see the changes in construction. You can see where the entry and exit points are. You can see what has shifted in their priorities over time as to which units are there, what types of vehicles are there. Looking at it over time and watching things change enables us to determine what's happening at that location. How has GeoIt evolved in modern warfare? Well, I mentioned satellite imagery, but now geospatial intelligence has taken on a whole new meaning. In the last 20 years or so, we've become reliant on multiple levels of geospatial intelligence, from the ground level to space. The legacy geospatial intelligence collection was traditionally completed from satellite imagery. If you go back even further than that, you can even look at what surveyors and map makers used to do back in the revolutionary times. So there's always been a need to understand location. There's always been a need to map out where things are and what's happening. And that's shifted over time to rely more on technology, things like satellites. Satellites provide perspective from an aerial level. They're very hard to thwart. It's hard for an adversary to stop a satellite from collecting good imagery. And if you have that imagery, you can derive useful data from that imagery. So starting from that space level, going down to the earth level. So in space, we have satellites. You even have multiple layers of satellites from high earth orbit to low earth orbit satellites. And they have different capabilities depending on what type of sensors they have on them. Satellites can have multiple sensors, packages attached to them. They can be things like electro-optical, what you would call RGB or normal color imagery. Um, they can collect synthetic aperture radar, which is radar-based data. Uh, they could collect thermal imagery, so that's detecting the change in temperature between different objects. They can collect multi-spectral imagery, so that's basically like the electro-optical imagery, but a lot more bands of light are being collected. It's very useful for determining different types of vegetation. Uh, and there's all sorts of sensors you can put up there, including video sensors as well. So satellites are a great, great useful tool for the military to collect information and build intelligence analysis off of. And then moving down from that space level into the aerial level. Uh, the military uses a lot of aerial intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance assets, things like manned aircraft or unmanned aircraft like drones. The aerial assets provide a capability to loiter over an area for a long time, to get higher resolution information, higher resolution imagery, and that is very useful for determining exactly what's happening on the ground. Aerial assets also can move quickly to different areas. You don't need to wait on a satellite to orbit the Earth. You can shift them over. Obviously, they have a lower range and the amount of space that they can cover, but they can get to places very quickly and get you a live, a near real-time data feed as to what's happening on the ground there. So aerial assets are critical. They can collect all of the same imagery that I mentioned that satellites can collect, different payload options for the military to collect and fuse that information. And then we've, if we move from space down to the aerial level, down to the ground level, on the ground level, the military collects a lot of data and information from those assets that I mentioned that is geospatial data. So things like cell phones, GPS devices, electronic equipment, all of these things put off signals that can be collected and tied to a location. That information can be fused together to determine what's happening on the ground. For example, the military might collect cell phone data for a certain area to determine where people are moving. Or 
They might collect information on a piece of military equipment to determine where an adversary is moving to. How does Geolink contribute to strategic decision-making at high levels of military leadership? While well, geospatial intelligence is used to track equipment all over the world, things like nuclear armed submarines to anti-aircraft weaponry, it's used to understand how our adversaries or potential adversaries are utilizing their military around the world, how they're positioning their units, how they like to train, how they like to fight. These things are all informed by good geospatial intelligence and it's critical information that we share with our military leadership to make those big strategic decisions. How do you see geospatial intelligence involving in future conflicts? Well, you're gonna see a lot more drones out there, a lot more sensors collecting, and artificial intelligence will be used to fuse all of that information together. So more drones, more sensors, more AI, and able to fuse all that information together in a near real-time situation. And if you combine the amount of data and information that you can collect from drones with this new explosion in space technology as launch costs are plummeting, innovation in space is going to skyrocket and that will equal more satellites in space, more sources of data and information in space, more innovation in space. So you're gonna have this multi-layer innovation between the ground level drones and the high level space assets. So I believe geospatial intelligence is just about to enter a massive boom phase, leveraging the technology that's occurring in space and terrestrially from drones.